Hello, hello. So this video is going to be an overview of me making this VTuber model for this person. Now, originally, when this person reached out to me, I wasn't really interested in making the model since I was about to start another project and I didn't have time to work on other things. But that project ended up getting time gated and I was sort of left with nothing to do. So I backtracked and asked to see the design. So they shared the design with me and I actually liked it quite a bit. So I agreed to make it for them as long as I could post it to social media and stuff. And they agreed. Except I would use this head. Since I liked it more. So with the context out of the way, let's jump into Blender. Now normally I would use a character base since, well, it's just a lot easier. But I decided to sculpt the body from scratch instead since the body was probably going to be used in a commercial setting and I didn't want to risk any issues. So since I was going to have to make it from scratch, I decided to turn it into a learning experience. Now, in my previous projects, my strategy to learn to sculpt has been, for the most part, just looking at 3D scans and trying to copy what I see. Now, while this has been helpful in some ways, it's been not so helpful in other ways. The problem is, sometimes when looking at an area, especially the abdominal region, I don't really know what the hell I'm looking at. I don't know if it's just me, and I don't really know how to explain it that well, but sometimes it feels like I'm just looking at a surface of incoherent waves, and because of this lack of intuition of what the surface is supposed to be, I end up iterating over the same area an unnecessary amount of times. And while I eventually get the shape I desire, the time it takes to get there and the way I go about doing it is, well, it just isn't good enough. So to address this issue, I decided to use a model with simpler and more defined shapes. So as usual, I start by blocking out the body using simple shapes. After I had roughly matched the references silhouette and proportions, it was time to remesh the body and to merge everything together. After smoothing everything out, I started to draw out the cavities. Cavities? Is that the right term? I don't know. Anyway, my focus was to separate the different muscles and to emphasize different levels that the muscles lied on in order to correctly model proportions and volume. And each time the model got too stretched out, I would increase the mesh's poly count, which would allow me to add higher frequency details. Now, originally my plan was to sculpt out the whole body, but after moving from the abdominal area to the legs, I started to realize that I was taking in way too much information at once. And I felt like if I tried to do the character again from memory, I would just get confused and I wouldn't remember anything. So I decided to stop early and began to compare my results with the original reference. So starting from the top down, we can see that the head is completely wrong, but I wasn't trying to get the head right anyway. So I think I can give myself a pass on that. However, what I can't give myself a pass on is the shoulder area, since I made it way, way, way too large. Like those are some small ass shoulders, holy crap. So I definitely need to watch out for that in the future. Another area that doesn't look quite right is the stomach region. This time it's the opposite issue where I made it too small and it should be larger. Moving down to the pelvis region, for some reason I made the bottom of the butt flat. And I think this occurred because I made the leg itself a little too small. So by pulling in the leg, I pulled in the butt by proxy. So I'll also have to be careful with that. And talking about the leg, this whole muscle is just completely wrong. It's tucked in here and then protrudes outwards over here when it's meant to just be one long shape. So that was pretty, that, that was done pretty terribly. Now I could keep going, but I think you get the point. There are a lot of mistakes and trying to identify and address all of these mistakes at once just feels like a fool's errand. So I think in the future, if I'm going to practice anatomy in any sort of meaningful way, I'll probably need to focus on specific parts at a time. Now, I have no idea how I'm going to actually practice this without boring myself to death, since sculpting an arm or a leg just for the sake of practice isn't really something I see myself doing. But hey, I'll figure something out, I suppose. So, with that little experiment done, it was time to transform the body into something that was actually usable. So the first thing I did was to add some breasts to the character. After doing that, I softened out all the definition that I just spent all that time making, which sort of killed me a bit on the inside, but oh well. And then finally, I added a skeleton to the character so I could more easily adjust the proportions. So with the skeleton in place, I began matching the model to the main reference. Now, since the reference only had a front view, 
I decided to go through my Twitter likes to find characters with a similar petite build that I would also use as reference. Now this was the part of the video where I tried to shamelessly plug my Twitter by telling you to check out my likes page for yourself, but I can't, because they privated likes. God fucking damn it, Twitter. <sighs> and slowly you come to realize. Anyway, with the modeling of the base complete, it was time to start adding clothing. As to start off with, I added shoes by masking out part of the foot and then using the mask extract tool. I then created the sole of the foot by adding a subdivided cube. I then started making the sock. Now at this point, I wasn't really sure if I wanted the sock to be its own mesh or if I should just color the base and I couldn't really make up my mind. So I decided that that would be future me's problem to figure out and I only modeled the top of the sock. Now to model the top part of the sock, I created one of the little ruffles slapped on an array modifier, and then finally wrapped it around the curve. Now, to create the rest of the clothing, I was going to use Marvelous Designer. But before we move away from Blender, you might be wondering why I had this scene set up like this. And it was so that I could do this. Now, it wasn't that satisfying. Anyway, now in Marvelous Designer, to create the pants, I just imported a basic pattern from the asset library and then cut off the length and made some slight adjustments here and there. To create the shirt, I needed to get the arms out of the way. So I decided this was a good time to retopologize the body. After it was rigged up, I exported the mesh with the arms up and the arms down so I could animate between the two poses. So with the arms out of the way, I added a shirt. Unfortunately, the simulation wasn't really giving me the results I desired. At first, I thought to reduce the breast size even more, so the cloth would drape further downwards, but I had already made them quite small already, and I didn't really feel like reducing them to nothingness. Instead, I chose to fake it. I went back into Blender, gave the character a bit of a lean, I then exported that to Marvelous Designer, and then simulated the shirt once again. This time, it had a much better shape, and finally, I exported the shirt and pants back into Blender. So with the clothes back in Blender, I started adding extra parts, like the threading, the fold, the shirt top band, the uh, belt thingies. So, with all the accessories added, it was time to model the head. Now, to model the head, I, uh, no. Um, so, I basically imported a V-Roid model and began stretching out its face to match the reference. I then decapitated the model and started retexturing the head. I then fixed the expressions, added hair, and then finally modeled the hairband. Now for the hair, instead of extending the clump all the way up to the top like I normally do, I just discontinued it not even halfway up the head. It looks sort of ugly in the workspace viewport, but in the rendered viewport, it looks fine. So if it works, it works. With the modeling basically done, it was time to do the UVs. Now, before UVing the model, I was going to need to optimize the character since it was going to be used as a VTuber model and currently it would perform very poorly in a real-time render environment. Now typically this is the point where you would retopologize, but I decided against that. Now did I refuse to retopologize the object because it is extremely boring, takes forever, hurts my hand and back and makes me regret my life choices? Yeah, but I also had more solid reasoning. Now if we consider where the model is actually going to deform, it's only really the hair and the head. Now, the hair already has good topology, because it was made from a curve, and the head already has good topology, since I stole that shit from somewhere else. Now, the body still will have some amount of deformation applied to it, but even if there are some weird collapsing triangles, you probably won't even notice due to the flat lighting. So, with my cope out of the way, instead of manually creating new geometry, I just used the decimate modifier instead. And with that, the poly count was significantly reduced. So... After unwrapping everything, it was time to texture paint. So I take, so I painted the model. Not really much to say here. I didn't really use any special tricks. I just, you know, painted it. Except for the little fish. I tried to paint that, but that was a pain, so I said fuck it, and I just modeled it instead. Now, throughout the texturing process, I was also adding line art to the model. Typically, I would use the inverse hull technique, but since I was going to export the mesh as a VRM model, I decided instead to install the VRM add-on for Blender. I then used that add-on's custom tune shader to create the outlines. 
And with that, the character was looking pretty good. So now that the texturing done, it was time to rig it. Now you're probably thinking, didn't you already do that? Yeah, but no. See, I don't really know how Unity works, or really how VRM files work at all. And I don't know if it requires a specific skeleton setup or not. And I really can't be fudged to look it up. So to make things easier for myself, I decided to import a skeleton that I know already works. And this is the skeleton that I'll be using. So after the rigging the character, it was time to add some expressions. So I made a smug, puffy, and judgy expression. I also added some vowel shapes so the character could have some lip sync. So with the character rigged, the expressions added, the texturing done, it was time to finally export the character to the Unity. And oh my god, this next stage sucked. So in Unity, all I had to really do was configure the bones, add the materials, add some spring bones, set up the blend shapes, and also export as a VRM. By itself, it doesn't take too long. The problem was, if something was wrong with the rig, I would have to go back to Blender, re-export it from Blender, and then do all those steps again. And there was a lot that went wrong. So some of the issues I encountered were expected, like doing the weight painting wrong and having to go back to Blender to fix it. And that was fine. I expected I would have to constantly export and re-export to fix that up. What I didn't expect is some of the bullshit issues I ran into. So one of the issues I ran into was the face being white. I don't know why I was doing this. I thought maybe the shader wasn't applied, so I tried changing the shader, that didn't work. I thought maybe the sun lamp was overexposing it, so I disabled the sun lamp, that didn't work. I thought maybe the texture wasn't being applied correctly, that maybe there was a parving issue, so I tried reapplying the texture, that didn't work. And I just had no idea what was wrong with it. Eventually I figured it out it had something to do with the materials. So I went back to Blender, and I tried to change the materials to just a basic emission shader. But it still wasn't fixing it. And I had no idea what was wrong with these material slots and why they were breaking on the export. It honestly didn't make any sense at all. So eventually I decided to just delete all the material slots, reapply all new materials, and then just hope it would work. And it did. I don't know why it worked. All the materials were just normal emission shaders, like the ones that already were applied to it, but I don't know. <laughs> it just it just suddenly decided, yeah, that's the way I wanted it. Another issue I ran into was the lip sync not working. The problem was th is that the base mesh I used had the mouth open, but it was supposed to be closed, and that sort of broke the interpolation. So I tried to fix this by just moving the closed mouth key upwards and to make that the base shape instead, but that didn't really work. So due to my experience with programming, I thought, hey, what if I don't change anything and just try re-exporting it again? And it worked, surprisingly. Well, sort of. The lip sync was working, but the expressions were now broken. For some reason, the old base key shape of the head was now baked into the expressions. And I don't know why, but hey, at least the lip sync was working. So that's a win in my book. So after testing out the Moto and BC phase to see if it was working, I noticed that the line art that I had manually applied beforehand didn't look that good, and was zipping in and out of the face. But at this point, I was pretty sick of the project, and I was scared that if I tried to re-export the Moto, the lip sync would just break again. So I decided, alright, I'm gonna call it here. So I made a Twitter post showing off the Moto and stating that I was done with it. But then someone offered to help. Now. I really wanted to be lazy and be like, nah, I'm good. But when opportunity presents itself like this, it's probably best not to be a lazy arsehole. So I DM'd them with an issue I was having with the eyes, and they gave me some good advice to use the blend shapes instead of bones, and to also try a program called Vignon, since VC face was no longer getting supported. Now I didn't really feel like downloading and trying out another program because I seemed like a lot of work. So I tried getting the blend shapes to work in VC face, but I couldn't figure that out, so I downloaded Vignon, and it was actually a lot easier. And it was a literal toggle to choose if you wanted to use bones or blend shapes. And this is the final model and how it looks. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how the model came out. Obviously it's not great that the expressions are still broken, but at least I have a character that can look around, doesn't look terrible, and has some sort of usability. I will have to revisit this subject because I do want to know how to make a VTuber model properly, 
But before I attempt that, I'm probably going to have to watch a couple of tutorials on how to add expressions to Vignon. But that's the project and that's the video. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching. Till next time.